Well, this will be the last review I do of the Beaver Tail Stealth 2000. Um, so let me run through a few things here. This boat, great boat. Everything's handled pretty well. Bungee cords, weathered really good. Only thing that I that you'll notice sun damage is uh, things like that real true camel there in the chair. And we got some of that on the bow of it, on this uh, doggy pad as well. Uh, point being is, you really should have this thing covered up with a tarp or something, keep it out of the sun. You do have to drain it once in a while. I get about a cup of water, a cup or two of water out of it. It sits around in the winter time. Pretty sure the water is coming in through uh, all these uh, attach points where I've drilled holes and, uh, you know, used rivets and whatnot. Um, let me see here. Oh, chairs. Yeah, I took the stock seat and uh, I moved it. And the idea was was change the, uh, the center of gravity when I'm in the boat by myself. When I'm sitting more towards the center of the boat, it's much easier to paddle. You don't get near as much of that uh, porpoising. So it, it tracks a whole lot better. And, you know, I made a seat out of, I don't know, two by sixes, and I'm sure you all you smart folks can figure out better ways to do it. But still swivels, it works. I uh, built something out of a Costco stadium chair for grandkids. That works too. It's the same idea, it's got a swivel to it. Um, that eight gallon, cut out eight gallon jug here is if you're gonna be needing to bail this thing, which, by the way, the hull design if you swamp it, it's just going to fill with water and you're going to sit in the water. So if you're going to bail it, you need something serious to bail with, and so that's what I use. I've been fortunate and I haven't uh, swamped it yet. Don't want to either. When you go to toss this thing up on a truck, it's really easy to do. I know the boat weighs 150 pounds, but it's not, uh, it's not nuclear rocket science to do this. So what I do is my little truck has a hitch ball. As does probably every little truck in the United States. So I have a boat, uh, excuse me, I have a rope attached to the rear of the boat. The rope, the length of the rope is about nine foot. The boat's about 12 foot. Actually, this rope's about eight right now. It doesn't matter too much. So I take the loop here, I put it over the hitch ball, and when I swing the end of the boat around, the front end of the boat around, the rear of the boat is trapped or captured by the rope. So it can't slide out on you. Then you just toss it up, slide it up on top of the rack, and you're done. So it's really simple. I solved most of the problems that uh, I had, which was things like seats, and and uh, I needed a, a cart when I want to drag it down a trail. So I put a link, uh, uh, hopefully on this video, that you can follow. It goes to a blog that explains how I went about doing this. And that includes things like you know, uh, reinforcing or adding uh, sacrificial grind material to the keels. I did that because that seems to be probably a source, major source of damage. So you can see where I added some high density polyethylene and did some plastic welding with my Harbor Freight setup. I got a garage full of high quality Harbor Freight stuff now. Anyways. Um, after I, uh, after I solved the hull grinding and solved my cart, um, I'm pretty good to go. Here's an example of a big old gouge right here. And the only reason I want to point that out is that this hull is pretty thick. So I've got scrapes and I got dings and, you know, I got some paint I put on it that was kind of a misguided attempt to make it easier to hide in a brush. And uh, speaking of which, honestly, unless you are in an area that's just got some really stupid ducks, the only way you're going to hide this thing is completely grass it in. So, you know, completely brush it, completely grass it, but there's nothing you can do with paint that's going to work. I'm happy with it. I have a simple rack that I made. I'm sure all you smart folks can figure out better racks. But this boat only weighs 150 pounds. And so I've got a rack that's got a back half to it. 
and then it's got some removable center braces here and it's got a front half to it and the front half kind of has a clever arrangement that allows me to keep my little toolbox work box so the braces hold the front and the rear together and the boat tosses up there and and it works so works for me got a rack got a cart got a boat that floats uh, seats that work I'm a happy guy I'm a happy grandpa with it uh, the grandkids like it I've used it a lot this spring for fishing I used it a ton last year for duck hunting so uh, is it worth the money yes can you get better boats absolutely uh, but having used this uh, as I have I, if I had gone and bought a high-end Hobie and spent 3300 bucks on it I, w I don't think I would be as happy because I think this hauls the grandkids and makes a better fl fishing platform than I would with a high-end Hobie. Now, having said that, how much money do you have to shell out for one of these? Well, I suggest getting them used if you can. Six, seven hundred bucks. I got lucky on this one. I know what they retail for, about nine fifty or so. But you find them for sale. Uh, I don't think you can hurt them other than the grinding through and the keels which you can solve with some plastic welding um, unless, some, unless some Billy Bob shot a hole through it with a shotgun I can't see how in the world you would hurt this boat uh, so I'm happy with my purchase I don't have a problem recommending it to somebody else uh, you know it's me and a grandkid or grandkids and uh, it works and I'm a happy grandpa life is good thank you